Darkest Dungeon prides itself on all the unique enemies you can run into, whether they're giant terrifying bosses or rather large enemies. Especially for those really high HP enemies, taking them out can be quite a bit of a pain. So here's going to be a quick video on how to build a party using the Jester to one-shot these large enemies so you can take them out of the picture ASAP. Before we start, I just wanted to mention that this is especially effective against tankier enemies. But for facing bosses, while it is possible to still one-shot them, this is going to take considerably more time and you're going to have to deal with whatever unique thing that the boss is going to be bringing to the table to mess you up. Okay, so for anyone who's played Darkest Dungeon before, you know that the Jester is a very unique character. He can buff the party, inflict bleed, de-stress, and has a fancy little ability we call Finale. With that in mind, the strategy is pretty simple. Keep the Jester alive while he consistently buffs your party, then debuff the single enemy, and finally unleash Finale and one-shot him. So for this party build, there are going to be two characters I would recommend taking alongside the Jester, and starting from the very back, we're going to have the Occultist, Jester, Man-at-Arms, and then some sort of reliable frontline person. The role of the Occultist here is to make sure that you are healing and debuffing that tankier enemy, and so you want to make sure that you're bringing weird reconstruction as well as the weakening curse. As for the Jester, well, you want to be buffing constantly, and then you either are going to be using Dirk Stab or Solo to move forwards, and then finally Finale. With that in mind, you want to make sure that your Jester is bringing Finale, Battle Ballad, and Inspiring Tune. I just wanted to mention that while all abilities add 30% damage, Battle Ballad and Inspiring Tune add an 8% critical chance, and so you want to make sure you're using these two as often as possible, just to build up that critical chance as well. As for your fourth ability, either bring Dirk Stab or Solo. Solo is an absolutely massive buff, it's better than any of his other abilities, but you can only use it once and it basically just throws the Jester into the front line with some more dodge. Dirk Stab is a lot more reliable, and this way you can also do damage over time if you want to do so, especially too if you get shambled around or moved around and it's all of that type of thing. Personally, I like Solo just because it's kind of like a guaranteed flashy move, and then that way you will be ready to just go in and use Finale and wreck them. And the third person is the Man at Arms, which you want to make sure they are protecting the Jester at all costs. Recommended abilities include Defender, which is going to make sure that you can protect the Jester from any damage, and Bolster, which is just going to increase dodge chance so then the Jester doesn't even get hit. For the strategy, essentially you want to use your occultist to debuff any protection that might be on this large enemy while the man-at-arms protects the jester and adds dodge to him. Then the jester can use battle ballad or inspiring tune to start building up his finale. And then when the time is right, dirk stab or solo yourself into position and unleash finale on the enemy of your choice. For a frontline person, try to bring someone who can inflict damage. I recommend either a leper, a hellion, or a flagellant. Those all pretty work pretty well. The reason why they work out well is that they also can heal themselves, which also just gives a little bit more sustainability to the party. In addition, the Jester can buff them to make sure that they are hitting all of their shots with Battle Ballad to make sure that you're inflicting a lot of damage to some of these weaker enemies. Even though the Jester is building up to take out the big bad boss, of course the smaller enemies can be quite a pain and that's kind of what you want the, your frontline person as well as your man at arms to just try and clean up that enemy line just a little bit more. As for trinkets on the party, it's pretty simple. For the Jester, you just want to max out damage and critical percentage. So for damage trinkets, we've got the Legendary Bracer, Damage Stone, Warrior's Bracer, Berserk Charm, Dismas Head, and the Ancestor's Pen. As for critical trinkets, we've got the Critical Stone, Surgical Gloves, Focus Ring, Critical Dice, and once again, the Ancestor's Pen. So for my Jester, I love bringing the Legendary Bracer as well as the Ancestor's Pen. The Ancestor's Pen is kind of great because it not only gives you a critical bonus, but it's also going to increase your attack just to kind of double down and get to some of the best of both worlds. Otherwise, the only other person we're going to be paying attention to is going to be our Occultist, because he needs a little bit of help with healing as well as debuffing. For your debuff trinkets, we have the Cursed Incense, Demon's Cauldron, Debuff Stone, and Debuff Amulet. As for healing trinkets, we've got Jania's Head, Jurgen's Charm, and the Ancestor Scroll. For the Occultist, I'm going to bring Demon's Cauldron and Jania's Head, because you just really can't go wrong with those two items. Otherwise, make sure your party is built to just play around this Jester. This could be some defense or offensive bonuses, but honestly, it's just kind of up to you how you want to build both the Man-at-Arms and your Frontliner. And that's going to be a quick guide on how to build a party that is going to be specifically built around this Jester, who can just one-shot some of these larger enemies. I hope these tips were kind of helpful, and let me know down in the comments below on whether or not you agree or disagree with them. 
Hey, you know what's cool? I edited a video for a guy called Two Left Thumbs, and he's pretty awesome. And on top of that, it's Darkest Dungeon content. So that's going to appear right here. So make sure to go check out that video because I edited it and I really put my heart and soul into it. All right, that's going to be it for me. Catch you guys next time.